We have this horse named Prince. He came in with a pretty significant injury. Dr. Young is here, and we're all putting our input in on this horse. Dr. Mary Ellen is here all week, so she'll be helping us during the auction. So the history on him, give you a quick rundown, is he got injured in the field. Yeah. Um, so it was open a while. So again, contaminated. He did get to uh, taken into the vet clinic. They did lavage that way. And then at that point, the, uh, the tendon is 60% tore when they ultrasounded it then. Okay. Uh, it was open and draining. And at that point, they decided that with the odds and everything, that they were gonna surrender him for euthanasia. Cause I was expecting like, lame, yeah. can't bear weight. Yeah. And when he was bearing He's weight. He's fully weight bearing. Yeah. Um, and the owner was fine if we wanted to try on him. Cause he was like, yeah, if you want to try, let's we'll see what he does. I was like, yeah, I will try. And I was going to be here this weekend to do his bandage changes. Yeah. Now what worries me the most, and we know it was contaminated, is when I took a smear of that fluid on Saturday night. And this is like joint fluid? Like this is what was draining out of the tendon okay. sheath. So as it was draining out, I just took a slide, smeared across okay. it. So, but take a look That's at awesome. all, take a look at all those neutrophils. I was prepared for you to tell me this was a 26 year old and that was going to be like, no, I'm soft saying, tissue, but a seven year old. Oh gosh. Yes. <laughs> now you're oh, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. The good news is he's still sound. Dr. Nancy um, made this amazing slide prep of discharge from this horse's leg wound and neutrophils are a kind of white blood cell. They're kind of the first line of defense white blood cell. And so when they're there, it means the body's mounting an immune response. When they're degenerate, it means they have actively encountered a pathogen and are activated. So that means we know we have active bacterial infection with which fits with this horse's history. It's really amazing that he's not painful. So infection, that develops into sepsis is usually very painful. So that's the one thing that's, that and his age um, means it's worth a fight, but his prognosis is pretty grave um, with that much of the tendon sheath being open and draining for as long as it was. When, when I started this, I would do that, and of course it would freely flow out. Yeah. Now we're not, so that's how, and it was pressurized yesterday when I, was going yeah. to lavage and I'm like, okay, we're, we're not lavaging anymore. I would not try to close that. Yeah, leave it open and let I it would drain leave it. if possible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We definitely got to get some farrier care for some support. So that's also on the agenda too. I need to get a hold of Elijah today. So Dr. Nancy and I have been kind of weighing pros and cons for this guy because we already know that there's infection, but Dr. Nancy put um, pretty concentrated intravenous antibiotics in a vein in the leg with a tourniquet. So when you put it in a vein, it kind of circulates locally, but it holds that antibiotic in a higher concentration in the part of the body that we want to target infection in. We're talking about other antibiotics that we can apply locally that are safe to put on the outside of the leg. So we're going to put some um, other topical antibiotics there when we do his bandage change after we kind of lavage it to try to get as much of the bacteria that's present killed. Clinically, the way he looks today gives me a lot of hope that maybe there's a chance, but um, Dr. Nancy and Dr. Mary Ellen and I were just talking about prognosis and how sepsis can really come on like almost overnight. Sepsis causes really severe pain and would take that prognosis from um, pour into that grave category where he probably would suffer and then pass once that sepsis spreads to the bloodstream. So uh, Dr. Nancy saved his life with what she did this weekend. He wouldn't be where he is right now if she hadn't done those advanced interventions over the weekend. So cautiously optimistic that maybe we've headed off sepsis, but we're really not gonna be in the clear until probably another two to three weeks of bandage changes have passed. And then sepsis would be one of those things that wouldn't be a long drawn out conversation where we'd try a bunch more stuff. If he gets septic, um, euthanasia would be the kindest choice and really there wouldn't be more treatment options available. 
So we are not super scientifically mixing some DMSO gel with an antibiotic called Ceftiofir sodium. Um, DMSO stands for dimethyl sulfoxide. It is a carrier agent. So it helps take other medications and it pulls them deeper into tissue. So in this case, we're hoping that the DMSO is gonna help pull that antibiotic into the surrounding tissue and help prevent infection. We're gonna be careful where we put it because we don't want it to be too close to that open wound, but hopefully this will help. DMSO is the smell of laminitis to me. Yeah. No, he's being so good. He really is. He is. He is a sweetheart. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better horse to do all this too, so. Well, I'm very impressed by you, sir. Can you please not get sepsis? Please don't. Please don't. You're too cute. Some child in your future is really invested in you doing better. So we just finished uh, Prince's evaluation today with Dr. Lydia and Dr. Mary Ellen. Dr. Lydia were spot on with what I'd been doing. In the meantime, the only thing we changed today is we did add in some topical antibiotic with DMSO as a carrier. So uh, that was the only thing we really changed other than what I had done over the weekend. And other than that, everything looks good. We're still guarded about it because again, we, we need another two to three weeks before we can really breathe and we're like, okay, he's gonna possibly be okay. Because even once we get past three weeks, he has another year of rehab because anytime you have a damage to a tendon, it never uh, heals back as well as it was originally. It's always a weaker point. So even if he rehabs in a year, he's not gonna be one that I definitely would not put him on barrels, running, things like that, because he could easily tear that apart where it's gonna be a weaker spot. So he would be a good trail horse, you know, good walk, pleasure horse. As it heals, we could ultrasound, get a better look in there, but even if it looks perfect, you always know the way those fibers mend back, they're never as strong as it was originally. I am in here today because a coat come in uh, her name was Blossom. She's deaf and I've always dreamed of having a paint horse that was marked like her. So I am taking her home so my other mare will have a play buddy. Congratulations, you now own Blossom. Thank you. You can go ahead and move the picture. Yeah. All right, this is Blossom. Uh, I've adopted her. We now belong to each other. I think I belong to her more, as it looks. But uh, Transport will be delivering her to my place Monday evening, and we'll get her turned out and start messing with her and let her make some friends, and we'll get her trained, broke, and see what we can get her to do. Maybe we can teach her a trick or two. <laughs> Got the tractor over here. We have one of the shelters that was put up a few years ago. It's seen better days and it's time to take it down because one of the posts rotted off. Uh, so it's not safe anymore. And the horses are very interested in it because they're going over by it right this moment. We got to get it down before they get hurt. We made quick work of it. Luckily there wasn't too much left. This will help Troy clean up. <laughs> We're done. 
Now just gotta go take it and unload it. Good morning, I'm Dr. Mary Ellen Chavez. I had the wonderful opportunity to come out and help with Horse Plus in years past at the Navajo and Hopi Nations trip, where we focused on horse education and providing horse services to the people that are there. I've been invited out for a working interview. Super excited to be able to help with some of the smaller animal things today. We have some cats and some dogs that are here that need to be spayed and neutered before they can go to their homes. So we have some things all set up. We're gonna be doing that here at the facility and getting them all set so they can go out and find their forever homes. We are here with our little tiny furry patient today. It's a little boy. Uh, he is getting ready to get neutered. And as part of that, we always do a thorough physical exam. So we've already taken a look at him earlier today, listened to his heart and lungs. This little guy got a full, clean, good bell of health. So we do not anticipate any issues with his small, tiny little surgery, and he'll always be a big man. For our neuters, we're gonna do what we call an auto ligation technique and it makes the surgery a lot simpler. All we need is one tool and a little scalpel blade. So we have our IM injection drugs for induction that we'll give, and then those will kick in. It's usually within a minute or two, and they'll just be floppy kitties. We will put in some eye loop to protect their eyes, and then uh, we'll flip them over, shave up, show the little treasures, make sure that we use some alcohol and then we'll put them over here and put the little mask on and we'll put them up on their iso at two percent mm -hmm. and then we'll get everything situated here while that's going on i'm going to clean off this area and then just move my tools over that way kitty will be maintained have some good oxygen flow and just squish one right here so it's a nice close you just do a tiny little. Oh, I'll watch, but it's not gonna kick Squish it out. Good Lord, there's pimples bigger than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is not happening today, folks, with my fingers. Got your little tiny testicle, and then you strip down the cord, just like this. Just like a donkey. Just rip it out and let it bleed, we'll be good. But then that gives you enough space. The clamp! Uh, I'm sorry, can you hand me my? I'm sorry, it's not that one. one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now, this is where you do get to do the cool little tie. So, come in like this. You go around like this. And then all you do, cut that off. And then you rotate like this. Roll it down your hemostats. And that's what they call the auto tie. And then you can just turn your hemostat like that each way just to kind of cinch down your knot. She makes it look so easy. <laughs> there are beans out of horses I dig out bigger than that. And then the other one, you do the exact same thing. There we go. And now you can turn the ISO down to zero. And then all I do is I just kind of put the little tissue tag into the little testicle. There's no bleeding. Good They'll job. like be ready tomorrow. <laughs> nice. Yep. So he can stay like that on oxygen while I give injection to the next one. Like just, we back just back. call it, we, it's the pretzel. It's the pretzel. Three, two, one. Oh no. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's so dramatic. Here. Just go to sleepy, 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 sleepy. Don't jump in. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right, little man, let me see your little treasures. He's got some 
So Look at that. All right, let's do your eye loops. So our two little boys today, Bundy and Frederick, they did awesome. Both of their neuters went really well. The one also needed a microchip, so I did that while they were knocked out, didn't even feel it. They're just sleeping off their drugs and they'll wake up and they'll be big boys. Haley, how many horses do you think we're getting today? Um, I think 16. I'm gonna stick with that. Okay, John? How many horses do you think we're gonna get today? Since she said 16, I'm just gonna do a minus one and go for 15. 15 is actually my lucky number. We'll see if you're right. Yeah. This time I will be, because Chunko told me. Okay. He knows the future. Bye. Kimberly, how many horses do you think we'll get today? I'm gonna say 21. Hey, Caitlin? Yes. How many horses do you think we're gonna get today? Mm, I'm gonna say 18. 18? It's a good number. Thanks. Cool. Even number. I mean, yeah. it's good. <laughs> well, I'm going to answer that here in a minute, actually, after I'm hooked up, because I actually have something to talk about in regard to that issue. Yeah. So let's get hooked up and go be waiting out front and we'll see when everybody else shows up and I can answer your question for you. So the question was asked, how many horses do I think we're going to rescue today? Well, it makes me think of uh, Sir Isaac Newton. He's sitting there under an apple tree and bloop, a little apple fell out and he thought, that apple fell for some reason. So he started making some laws for the second, the third law of Newton's uh, law is that for every action, there's an equal and an opposite reaction. And so when I think of horses, we don't like to think of them falling, but I think for every action of us rescuing a horse, the kill buyer has the opposite act reaction of not getting that horse. So I would like to get, well, you take pi, you square, 3.14 squared is nine point something, and you double that because we want to do twice as good as we can today and that's 19.7 horses. So let's round it off to 20. Let's get 20 horses today. We're ready to go. This time we're waiting on Jason. He was ready to go, but now I don't know where he's at. <laughs> so. Before he gets ready to pull out, I better go find Jason. just pulled in to auction so we're getting ready to go in and see what is here this month lots of people here I'm really excited uh, heard a lot of things seen a lot of good that you guys have been able to do so I'm really happy to actually be a part of it this time okay this is how it's set up for tonight these two lead ropes are attached to draft size halters. Awesome. These two are attached to minis and the rest are regulars. Awesome. And then I'll bring the bucket of okay. hay. We won't need but one bucket of lead ropes tonight because we're not going to leave them on. So, but that'll, should have us enough halters to hopefully halter everything we end up with. <laughs> It is 11 o'clock, auction has just ended. Uh, we're waiting on Jason to bring us the final sale bill to get the final official total, just because we know that fluctuates between what's on the ticket, by the time we settle up, horse left off, somebody gets a late sale to us, things like that. But ballpark 30-ish, 
So we'll see what the final official count is. Uh, we're, right now we're doing our getting them settled for the night, the initial triage. I've already got notes on some that definitely need Butte to be more comfortable tonight. And uh, this is Dr. Mary Ellen. She is her first auction. So she's kind of getting a feel for intake of, she's got to see before sale where we kind of do the initial assessment during sale where we're sitting there making notes. And then now we're at the second or the third round of triage is for the night. And then fourth round will be tomorrow before we load out. We rescued 10 horses tonight, then we rescued 20 horses, then we rescued 34 horses, and we ended up with 34 horses saved tonight. And that is only because people stepped forward, they donated, and I can't thank them enough. It's absolutely amazing to have rescued that many horses in one night. And then we had a couple other rescues here. Christian Farms was here, they rescued a horse. Outlaw was here, they rescued a horse. So we actually rescued like 36 horses here tonight between all of us, so super excited. Can't wait to get them back to the shelter and begin the intake process. It's gonna be a long process, but I know our staff is up for it. Just to, tonight's goal is the, the triage, the worst that need immediate pain relief, uh, getting microchipping as many as we can so we can start gauging temps on everybody and just speeds us up for in the morning where we've already got that part done. So, okay, who do we have here? 323. 323, okay. And uh, if you want to, on her sheet, put the bad knee uh, left front, because this is when I start making notes. I have, this is why my hair is my pen collector. But if it is a busy day, the more pens in my hair, the more chaotic my mind is. So. Gotcha. I've maxed out at five. After five, I need to just go away and come back another day. So it is reached five on auction day before. So, yeah, the pin number of pins is a red flag of the chaos. While we had just gotten started, just started to get in a rhythm of intake tonight, they come and got me. There was a horse that had went through the ring, and when he went through the ring, he was a stud horse, and they said during the sale that uh, one side was bigger than the other, meaning one testicle was larger than the other one. So we actually bid on the horse and we got outbid on, which happens. It is legal in Tennessee to castrate your own animals. And um, the individual had went to castrate him and unfortunately uh, it was a hernia. The uh, intestines had came down the opening that the uh, testicle comes through and had pushed past the testicle because the testicle was there, but the literally the intestines, the guts dropped out, putting it plain and simple. At that point, uh, he was contaminated. They did come and find me and uh, we did euthanize him, so he did not suffer. And we just had a little education on, I was explaining to him, anytime one of them is, one side is larger than the other one, I always suspect a hernia, especially if it's a big difference that way. I told them we would have not had castrated it and with a hernia in the field, we wouldn't have tried a hernia surgery in the field. That's something you only do in a sterile equine environment like uh, Tennessee Equine, University of Tennessee, those type of facilities. If we had ended up winning the bid on that horse, we would have euthanized the horse as well too. So that's just one of those of uh, financially, you're looking at several thousands of thousands of dollars. And that horse also had a breathing issue we had already noticed earlier. So it had other issues on top of the hernia. At least the horse didn't suffer. So that was a good outcome on that. So at least we were able to help it uh, at the end tonight, so. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, she's all good. Hey y'all, so I'm Peyton Christian. We are with Christian Farms Rescue and Rehab. We came to the auction tonight to help rescue horses. We can't do it on such a large scale as Horse Plus, but we are able to help as many lives as possible. Tonight, we're able to bring home three very very lucky horses with us this is going to be one of them she's a wonderful little mare that came through we're going ahead and getting her vetted up ready to leave and then the first thing in the morning she's going to go see our vets 
and get everything done that possibly needs. For now, we're giving her some calming medicine, Senchil, which is wonderful for her, and checking on her heart rate, gut sounds, lung sounds, so we already know what we're looking at. We're just very thankful to be able to work with them and rescue as many horses as possible, because every life counts. She's a sweet little uh, older gray mare. She does have some melanomas. We have some lameness issues at least. So that's our quick initial evaluation. It's not of least the things we know to look at in more in detail tomorrow. The sweet little girl, sweetie girl. This horse is pretty sore. Um, Dr. Nancy gave her some pain meds, but we're gonna microchip her in here so she doesn't have to move too much, so she can stay comfy. There you go, baby. We're gonna make this as easy on you as we can, okay? Yeah, you don't have to move. Rest easy. Yeah, thank you. You're all right, you're all right, sweetie. You're okay. You're all right. Be brave, be brave. Yeah, there you go. We're so proud of you. So I'm Roxy with Outlaw Equine Rescue and Rehab in Crossville, Tennessee. And we are at the auction tonight, um, helping out Horse Plus get the 34 horses that they rescued tonight sorted. Uh, we were also able to rescue a little mini foal. I don't believe it's fairly weaned. Um, but this guy right here is a looks like a retired standard bred. He's got his well freeze brand there, and and Dr. Nancy mentioned the numbers indicated he was in his 20s. Um, he's in bad shape, but he's very sweet, and he's got big tooths. But our goal is this: see that eye. That's a sweet eye. That's not a scared eye. That's a, I'm getting love. And that's what we want them to remember. No matter what happened before. So we have all of our horses accounted for now. Um, they're all put up for the night. They all have water. They're comfortable. They all seem to be getting along. Um, we are just making sure we have everything together and then we are leaving. I got one last water filling up right now actually and then we're good to go. It is 1.20 a.m. on Wednesday morning. We just finished auction. A, a initial triage post auction we have everybody of the 34 microchipped all but four which is a really good number they've got um, their water tonight everybody is as comfortable as we can be until we start our next round of triage in the morning deciding uh, making those final calls on who is unfit to make the trip back that it's a greater risk to them being harmed on the trip back versus being able to withstand the trip back without being stressed. What did you think, Mary Ellen, about your first experience of auction? <laughs> oh, well, a uh, lot of good things. It's really awesome to see everybody come together. Uh, we had some interesting things that popped up and everybody just pulled together to keep things going and keep horses going. Great when you have a team that really wants to work together and awesome to see these horses start to relax when they're in our presence. That was very rewarding. after auction and we are headed to get ready to start uh, doing morning triage and doing the videos for the subscribers and then loading out and heading back.
Last night we rescued um, a couple cats that desperately needed some safe place to go and um, we weren't planning on rescuing cats so we actually have DoorDash bringing us a uh, carrier uh, this morning so while we're doing the assessment we'll have to come out and, and get the DoorDash crate. Um, but right now they're in a bird cage and um, yeah we need to fix that. How smooth is it gonna go? The uh, halter's just busted open. Our box got old and decided it was done. We're just gonna do our uh, initial morning triage, do the assessment photos, and then uh, we'll start making our list of who is most critical, which trailer they go on based on medical priority at that point. And then, of course, we do have some studs, so that factors into those logistics of keeping studs separate, keeping everybody safe with them not harassing the females, fighting with the geldings, and again, just based on who is gets along and what urgent level when we get back. A few hours, yes, but that's what caffeine is for and having uh, teammates that help make the morning go smooth. <laughs> We are gonna get all the horses assessed. There's a lot of critical horses this time and we knew that as soon as we got to the auction and I reached out to our supporters and said, hey, our vet thinks there's probably at least 30 horses that need euthanasia. Help us save as many as we can. And we rescued 35 last night and two cats at this auction. And um, you're gonna see a lot of really critical horses. Um, one was euthanized as soon as we got it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's gonna be rough. I'm just trying to prepare myself for all the goodbyes we have to say. Our process this morning is I'm taking photos of the horses, both sides, front and back, their auction tags. Then they'll come down here to our vet station. We have Dr. Nancy and Dr. Mary Ellen uh, doing physicals on these horses, figuring out are they okay to transport? Are they so critical that we'll have to say goodbye to them here at the auction? And figuring out from there where they're gonna go so they the ones that can be transported can be transported safely. Um, so they're, they're getting Sinchil, electrolytes, anything they need down here at this station. And then I'm at the other end um, where Jason's doing the live assessment. So he can have self-service because there's a lot of metal here. And um, so I'm taking the photos there. So it's gonna be uh, very busy. 30, so over 30 animals is a lot to take in. All right, sweetie, we got some goodies for you, okay? Hey. There you go. Oh, you're gonna be sneaky about it? No, you need to swallow that, sir. <laughs> All right, so this guy that just walked up, we only got to see a few strides. Um, definitely seemed off in the right hind. Um, could be from an old injury, confirmation issue, uh, any number of things that contributed to him and his decline. This horse's story at auction was the halter had been left on and it was a young growing horse and the, literally the bone deformed around it, which matches, uh, the history matches. It is a baby. We don't even have our first set of permanent teeth. So those come in at two and a half. So we're less than two. not dropped down yet either. I'm not feeling a scar where he's already been cut. That's what I kept feeling for, but there's no scar. So he's still young, which matches with that because one that age, um, he should have dropped by borderline, but you could still give him a couple of months and he could drop naturally, so. So the tail tail on this one has been cut and it's a pretty tell sign that it's a big lick horse. Um, this is the one that they called a sidewinder when it went through the pen. Um, it has a hard, really hard time at the time then. She's just an older mare. She's at least 25 based on her teeth. Body condition score about ballpark three is just a rough estimate that way. Um, we do have a little hygroma here on the back of her elbow. That by itself is not life-threatening, anything like that. 
but she does have that. That's the main things on her. So we'll work her up a little bit more once we get back in more detail. This one came out of Cookful in April. She came through here then. Yeah, cause, um, nine, eight, nine. Nine. of the ones, 65% came through with Coggins that we have in hand already. Of those 50, 3% have been through a minimum of two auctions. One of them I can document five. Here? No, they at least originated somewhere else on their market Coggins, so this is at least the second auction. One of them with the numbers on top of the Coggins, she's been at least five. There we go. A horse that big should not have teeth like that. So this is the standard bread that we got last night. Um, it's super skinny. Um, uh, Dr. Nancy was saying that it's probably been through a few auctions and that this is what they do with skinny horses. They just keep sending them through auctions trying to make money and then eventually they just die in the, in the slaughter pipeline and through the auctions. Um, it really is sad and I mean, I wish that people would just take care of their horses. That's crazy. When I saw this horse, I was like, something looks weird. And she had a really bad injury at one point that ripped her hide off, probably like peeled it back like this. And it healed, and this is her dorsal stripe going down. It stops here, it starts over here. So originally this was over here, but through this injury it's healed. So her dorsal stripe is over here instead of right here. So it's just, just crazy, but she has quite the battle wound there from. You're a very brave girl, yes. She is probably weaned to foal because one teat is bigger than the other one. Or has been a broodmare at some point. Hello, sweetheart. She is grade four lame in the right hind. She's an older mare. She's at least 30 based on her teeth there. Um, she has been through at least two previous or two auctions since August because she originated in a market in Arkansas in August. Um, she's one that she's old, she's lame. She keeps getting passed around because she doesn't fit the good criteria for a good price to bring if they did ship her slaughter. So she's just going to keep making the circuit until we, somebody like us ends up with her or she dies on a trader. So unfortunately, she, um, she just old and wore out, bless her heart. Hi, Steve. Well, look at you. Uh -oh, and he's sweet. He's a, he's a stud. Cute. Little Jack. He looks young too. This is a very cute little miniature donkey. He's uh he's quite tiny. Sometimes people are like, oh, it's a miniature donkey, but this is actually a miniature donkey. So I do have permission. Once he's clipped. Totally taking this donkey. But he's just so sweet, even with little Bobsies. Yeah. I know. The sheet that your age sweet. match. Now, miniature teeth and little, anything miniature, you cannot go as accurately on the incisors as you can the big ones. Oh. So that's one, uh, it just doesn't work the same. They tend to have more pathologies of not enough skull space. I can go with him being with the hook there for a ballpark of 11. They called him 10, so we can go with that. Very nice, well endowed male. His only issue right now is he needs to be devoid of his testicles. But other than that, he's adorable, healthy. Good news is his Coggins was only pulled August the 15th, and it was an owner Coggins, so he has not been circulated through the slaughter pipeline, the auctions multiple times. So again, lots of times they get sold, owner dies, things like that. So we don't know why it ended up, but he is one that's fresh off the farm. So that's a good thing. Not been run through, run down, traded, the whole nine yards. And a lot of people don't want to buy the intact jacks because they don't want the hassle of cutting them. I'll gladly cut them. I 
Everything's going really good. There's a lot of horses coming through. It's just heartbreaking, the conditions we're seeing. Um, we do have a buyout program where people don't, like they can bring their horses if they want money for them, bring them directly to our shelter. We'll give them $200 a horse. A lot of these horses last night were sold in the range where they would have gotten more money if they brought them to us instead of bringing them here because we're trying to prevent the suffering, prolonging the suffering. So, um, you know, it's just, it's really sad seeing so many rough horses and old horses, but I'm just thankful that our organization is here with so many amazing supporters that are allowing us to get these horses and be there when they do pass it on because the alternative is just horrific to think about. Because we got so many horses, we hired a, another transporter. Yeah. Um, so there'll be four trailers uh, taking horses to the shelter today. So um, they're loading up uh, different groups and we've got them sorted out. So hopefully um, they'll ride well. And so this group will be headed to the shelter first because we're still doing it, our assessments here. First load of horses are headed off. So um, got to let Angela know um, that they're en route. So they should get there about two and a half hours. I got a whiff as soon as it came off. Amazing. It's been on there a while. Yep. They got put on there and never got took off. The good news is what they were trying to heal healed while it was on there, but we've had a little blood flow constriction. Perfect example of why you don't bandage with vet wrap between things like that. You got constriction, you get swelling. You would, yeah, you could do your Teflon pad, your roll gauze. You could even pad it with the light padding and then put your vet wrap on top. But with that, they just made a focal tourniquet because vet wrap, and again, movement area, it's in a bind. So this horse um, had a, a bandage wrapped around its leg. It's one of its front legs crooked. Um, so it's got a lot of issues, but I just thankful we were able to rescue it. He has a puncture hole by his rectum. There's a hole. Oh, that's, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Keep it that way. We have these things called, I think they're called anacondas down in Florida. This melanoma busted out. This is what happens when those melanomas rupture out. When your vet has warned you that when it reaches a certain point, they will rupture. This is a, unfortunately, a prime example and unfortunately this is not just like fresh yesterday this has been like this a little while her coggins originated in, in a market in kentucky in january so she's been through at least two that one and this one since then oh yeah. hi sweetie pie no no i don't want to spiders i just let them you know, you got they, you know yeah all right girl so it's fully ruptured up That was just a scab there. It's just a huge cavity. It goes in. It's pretty deep. So my phone is down to 37%. Oof, and there's pus. Show, show the my finger. With this group of horses, there's so many that are so critical. Like we know when they get back to the shelter, they would be euthanized on intake. And we don't want to prolong their suffering and making them stand on their feet for, you know, like two and a half hours to get to our shelter. So we're going to be putting a number of them down here that are their suffering is just so beyond we can't prolong it and we can't put them through it just for a drive so we have cookies here we're going to just love on them give them everything we can even though it's such a short amount of time that we we know them they'll be sedated and then they'll be put to sleep rescues like this are very hard they're hard technically they're hard emotionally but we have to be there for these animals and step up when their owners walked away. We're not gonna be able to take the one back to the shelter alive that has the divot in its face. Her legs are hurting so bad she's laid down again, so we're gonna have to give her the last act of kindness. Hey baby, it's so sad that such a short life has endured such suffering. 
if it was just her face, it's something else, but her leg is her biggest problem, causing her so much pain. I don't know if you hear this too, but. Yeah, the difficult breathing. Just because this is like into her air passage. Um, it's just crazy to see how much of a, a space is just gone from her face. And that's all just because some idiot left a baby halter on her and didn't have the gumption to go take it off. And her face grew around it. And then she's hurt her leg. Sorry, baby. Don't leave halters on your horses if they're going out in the field. This Palomino horse is hind end is so messed up. Um, the horse does have a cut tendon tail, so most likely it was a big lick uh, show horse. When horses are performing the big lick, they have about 70% of their weight on their hind legs, and that breaks down their tendons, ligaments, all of that stuff. And so we see very, very crippled Tennessee walking horses in the slaughter pipeline all the time. And I'm just glad we were able to be here for this horse, even though it's just for a short time and to be at that soft landing and to be there and say goodbye. Um, but there's a lot of big lick Tennessee walking horses that disappear in the slaughter pipeline, but they want to think, oh, it's all fine. We're not abusing our horses. Their horses are literally falling apart doing the big lick. We're getting ready to load up the horses that are stable enough to make the trip to our facility. Um, there were a total of 12 that we've had to say goodbye to here at the auction, one last night and then the others this morning. But um, we're thankful for the ones that are able to come to our shelter and we're still concerned about a lot of those, but there was just so many that we couldn't, we couldn't have them transport in that condition. It was the kindest thing to say goodbye to them here. exhausting today. We're so tired and uh, I don't know, no sleep, just emotionally draining and now we've got a long drive back to the shelter. So but I'm just thankful for the ones we're able to take back and the other ones that we sent out earlier this morning, they should already be there. So um, they get to chill and hang out and relax and drink water and be happy horses. So we have the final group loaded up on the trailer, ready to leave. It's a little after 2 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, which is normally what time we're getting back to Horse Plus. But because of the number of horses we had, we put down the most critical, the ones that were having trouble bearing weight, that were not meeting the U.S. standards fit for travel. So we done that and then the ones remaining that were fit to make the trip back, we've loaded those up and we're ready to head back. So what do you think, Mary Ellen, now that you've survived up to this point, not ran yet? <laughs> uh, a lot of caffeine. <laughs> what an overall incredible experience. I am very overwhelmed by the feeling of gratitude for the gift that we were able to give these horses today that critically needed that and didn't have that for a long time in their lives. To have all of us here come together, work so hard to make that work for those guys, um, it's something I'm gonna keep with me forever and I'm super grateful for the opportunity and for being able to give them this last act of kindness. It truly is kindness. Again, people are like, why don't you save the more savable ones that way? Unfortunately, these horses, again, 53% of them came in with a, a previous market Coggins. That means they've been at a minimum of two within the previous year. Some of them have been up to six within the year. One of them had been up to four since January when the Coggins was pulled. These are the type of horses that the slaughter kill buyers don't bid on right away because they're thinner. 
they're not fit to travel per the USDA guidelines, so they get traded among all these little regional markets and to flip, and eventually they either end up with us, but we're only a small group, so they eventually end up dying somewhere in the hands of traders moving around to market after market after market. So they do deserve kindness just as much as the others. And it was really nice to see the change in the horses last night as they started to realize, you know, we're talking with them. And then to see the continued change this morning, a lot of the chaos and craziness was gone. They seemed to respond to our voices. I really think that it helped ease their last journey. We are hot, sweaty, stinky, <laughs> and we are now going to ride all back in the cab of a truck together to yeah. stick together. <laughs> we're ready to hit the road. We're ready to be back to get things wrapped up. up in quarantine getting ready for the first load of horses that's on its way. I'm just getting everything set up so they can pull in and unload. So it's intake day and we're waiting for the trailers to get back from auction. And we had so many horses this time, it was 35, that we actually had to hire another um, transporter to bring more horses because we only have uh, three trailers. So um, the main auction team is actually still at auction. They haven't left yet. And it's like 1.30 or something like that. But the transporter already got sent this direction and he should be here in about 10 minutes or so. so once he gets here, we're gonna unload those horses and they'll just kind of hang out for a couple hours while we wait for the rest of the auction team to get back. We got the horses back, unloaded. They're settling in. We're making sure they got food and water. And our entire team is exhausted, mentally, physically, emotionally. So we're gonna call it a night as soon as we know everybody's stable and, and happy and we'll finish the, the intake on another day because we are all wiped out. It is a few minutes after six o'clock on Wednesday. We have arrived back at the shelter. Everybody has been unloaded and they are either, depending on which location they're in, they're either grazing grass before they're going to hay or they're going straight to their hay, settling in. Everybody is medically stable for the night. So we're gonna pause intake for the night because we are all wore out and we are going to resume tomorrow. morning after we got back from the auction and there are more horses that need the last act of kindness they were stable enough to come here and just have a little bit of downtime but now we have to go up and and start that process of, of saying goodbye to them it's never easy but I'm just so thankful we were able to get them and save them the continuing suffering they would have had without us There's just so many horses from the last auction rescue that are in really bad condition. Like this one, she can't use one of her back legs. She's struggling breathing. And yeah, there's just, there's so many horses in this group that we're just gonna have to love and say goodbye to. And Dr. Nancy and Dr. Mary Ellen are going through and determining quality of life. We knew right from the beginning that it was gonna be hard. And it's always hard saying goodbye but it's the right thing and their owner should have taken them to the vet and done it instead of sending them through the tortures of the slaughter pipeline. I'm one of the certified euthanasia technicians here. Um, so I'm gonna sedate her and let her get sleepy while she's eating. So I'll be like, basically the last thing she remembers is just being able to be in a barn, quiet and getting sedation and going to sleep. It's the greatest gift that we can give her. 
This is one of our uh, rescues from this month's auction. This month's auction was a rough one because unfortunately majority, I mean 90 plus percent, were older with grade four lameness. Lameness ranges from grade zero, meaning there's nothing wrong, to grade five, meaning they can't put any weight on that leg at all. Think of a broken leg, something like that. Grade four is where they're obviously lame at a walk. So it's not that they're just lame a little bit when they're trotting or a little slight movement. It is obvious at a walk. The Palomino that we did euthanize without hauling back had the wobblers, it's poor, what's they call it, side winding. I mean, its whole stifle was slinging out from that issue. So that's a pretty severe grade four. The biggest issue is right here in her fetlock. And unfortunately, that's not a new one. It's been there a little while. Combined with um, the stress for market, we now have some respiratory issues going on. Uh, we have um, a little bit of fever going on, which we expect when they mingle at market. We are doing our routine surveillance testing that we normally do for when they come in for market like this. So, but unfortunately, because of the severity of her lameness, combined with that she's starting to get sick from the other symptoms, we are going to give her the last duct of kindness. We're letting her eat some grain. She had a good, settled in last night, got some grass, got some hay. So these horses need love just as much as the other ones do because they're just neglected. They're, for lack of better terminology, they're essentially thrown away at the end of life. And then they get passed around until, unfortunately, they have a pretty rough ending to life on that part of it, so. You're right, baby. I think it's just really nice to give them a, a sedation so they get very, very sleepy and they don't, they don't know anything that happens to them. They just know that they were, they were in the, next to somebody who was loving on them and that's their last thoughts. This is sodium pentobarbital and we're not gonna show the whole euthanasia, but you know, just they're, they're heavily sedated and then I'll inject this uh, drug into her and then it will go and shut her brain down and her suffering will be over. We have finished up. Fortunately, thank you to the donors, we have able to rescue these horses and give them the last act of kindness. Again, this auction was a really rough one because of the number of horses there, the number that were in dire need of the last act of kindness. And again, we're there for those when they're kind of left behind and ignored by everybody else. So thank you all for your support and helping us give them a peaceful ending. Hi, I'm Mary Ellen Chavez. Um, I recently graduated from Midwestern University in Phoenix, Arizona. I have had the opportunity to come out and work with Horse Plus for the last two years when they went out to the Hopi and Navajo nations for their trips and I had a wonderful time. So I was super excited when Tani reached out to me and invited me out to the Horse Plus uh, facility here in Tennessee and super happy to have been able to be here for a week and just be integrated into uh, the team environment here and helping with all of the horses that are here as well as go to auction and go through that whole process. Also doing some small animal stuff while I've been here and everyone's been uh, so welcoming. It's been a fantastic experience. Some challenges that I ran into with uh, the working interview are just not having enough hours in the day or the night because there is so much to do. I know it was a little mentally challenging for seeing the amount of horses at this particular last auction that we went to. There were 70, at least half of those really were in need of euthanasia. So it wasn't the, the typical auction experience, but I am so glad to have been able to help all of those animals in that time of need. Being able to have that hands-on experience, the mentorship is critical to being able to apply skills and being able to network with those people that have different skill sets than you to be able to really come together and collaborate and, and make something like this possible. So for this working interview, it was a slightly different situation for myself since I had already been exposed to Horse Plus and their mission being able to help out on some of the Hopi and Navajo Nation trips. So I already had an idea of what to expect and some of the people as well. Um, for someone that hasn't been exposed to that, I think one of the challenges would be taking everything in in such a short period of time. 
because there are so many things that you guys are able to do. So maybe a longer period of time for someone that hasn't been exposed to that would help them kind of fully grasp and be able to get the experience that they need. This working interview blew my expectations away. I, I really didn't know what to expect. I knew there was gonna be a lot to do and I am just blown away at everything that I was able to accomplish here and learn here. It was kind of a little bit better than a lot of my veterinary school rotations that I did. If I had had an opportunity to do like a month long vet rotation out here, I would have made that my number one priority in vet school. So wish I would have known about that. I would have definitely incorporated it. Coming out to Horse Plus would be a wonderful opportunity for other veterinary students. For example, those that are in their clinical year, uh, their fourth year, I think this would be extremely valuable um, for the opportunity to come out for a few weeks and do the designated rotation out here. Uh, you'd really get to see a variety of cases, work with great mentorship from a lot of different people with backgrounds here, see a lot of things, really be involved, and really get to know the horses on these cases. I think it is dependent on your level of experience and what you've been exposed to in equine medicine, the realities of what's out there. It may be a little overwhelming for someone that hasn't seen some severe equine cases to come out and maybe go to an auction. That might be a little overwhelming, but I think anybody that has a desire in veterinary medicine to be the best doctor or professional that they can would understand the extreme value of that opportunity. And although it can be mentally and emotionally uh, challenging, I think that it's more rewarding in those aspects. And that is what I'm taking away at the end of this. And I would hope that anybody else in this opportunity would be able to do the same.